there is a lot of debate that I've I've heard about cloud being a manager level test, but it is. It is very much a CISSP test. It's just all the questions are cloud-based. It's You're going to have platform questions. You're going to have infrastructure questions that you just wouldn't see inside of CISSP. But it is critical to look and approach questions, especially, especially scenario-based questions from a manager perspective. So understanding what it is that managers are looking for, understand what the thought process is, is a good thing to do. That's that's what I have to say about it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm one of the, I think I've talked to one other person who kind of agreed with me. I actually found the test to be an easy test. It's, it's not easy. It's much more passable than CISSP. It's not easy, but it's all the prep I've done teaching CISSP for, let's see, I've been teaching CISSP since about 2003. Okay, so um, studying for CISSP, this is definitely very critical. Um, but teaching it since 2003, I have been well conditioned by IAC squared, whether I like it or not, to think like a manager, at least from their perspective as a theoretical base test. Um, and I found it, found that, inf I found that very useful in the exam. In CISSP, you'll find some questions that are uh, manager, sorry, in CISSP, what you'll find are some technical questions. So it's a technical question with a technical answer. In cloud, you're going to find a lot of those, but there's still logic inside of some of the technical questions that you need to apply from manager perspective. You will definitely find manager questions with manager answers in there as well. They to exist. One thing that I've heard consistently over the years, um, both C CISSP and CCSP, when people come out of the test and they're successful, they tend to agree. I was right. There are manager-based questions and answers in there. And I find consistently what's happened over the years with people that are unsuccessful is they come out of the test and tell me how wrong I am, that it was a very, very technical test. <laughs> there were no manager questions or answers. That's what I hear consistently. It's kind of the thing that goes through my head is, ah, oh, they were there. If only you'd if only you found them, you might have actually gotten out of the test successfully. So looking and thinking from manager level is um, looking at it from a business perspective. It's looking at it from a financial perspective. It's making decisions that are best for the business. In security, another thing I found consistently over the years teaching security is there are times when people just want to tell me how wrong I am when I say this is a good thing to do, whatever the topic is. And the answer is no, I would never do that. It doesn't work in my business. It's not appropriate. That's not a good thing. You shouldn't say such a thing. And it's, well, in your business, I'm going to agree with you, but in their business over there, that's not exactly true. Everything we do needs to be from a business perspective. We need to make sure in security that we're forwarding the business, that we're making sure that the users all the way through to senior management and the board of directors are getting the information that they need, getting the access to the systems that they need. They can perform their jobs and their daily tasks. Security, we get in the way. We intentionally put roadblocks between the users and their work. We put them there because the hackers are in that same position in relationship to the servers. So we wanna make sure the hackers have to go through a lot of roadblocks before they could possibly get to our data, get to our systems and cause us any kind of damage or trouble. Sorry, when we put controls in place and we stop the users from getting their job done, it's necessary. And there are times when we go too far. If we make it so the user can't do their work, we screwed up. They have to be able to get their work done. We wanna stop the hackers, but allow the users to get their work done. So finding the most effective, the most efficient, the best methods possible that are gonna stop the hackers, but the users can get through. So again, they can, they can do their daily tasks, whatever it is, whether they're in research and development, engineering, sales, marketing, Whatever the topic is, whatever they do for, for the business for work, that's what they have to be able to do. What I always say is I don't really care what a business does. 
which I think sounds bad when you first hear me say it. Like all my customers that I do work with, fundamentally, I don't care what they do for a business. It's a little rude, but I don't mean it the way it possibly sounds. Whatever they want to do as a business, whatever they want to sell, whatever they want to make, I'm happy for them. I want to be there. I want to help them along the way, get them there, but get them there securely. Like fundamentally, whatever they want to do as a business to me is fine, as long as they're not hurting people. <laughs> that aside, as long as it's you know good business and they're forwarding the planet in some way, shape, or form, marvelous. So I want to make sure that they get to that destination. But to do that, I have to understand what they're interested in. I need to understand what their concerns are. I need to understand what the um, threats are. Are they a target? Are they um, just more like accidental? Or are they just in an industry that's likely to get attacked a lot? Right, right now, it's actually been going on for about all of COVID. Anywhere in the hospital industry, hospitals, doctor's offices, things like that, they've been a high target for ransomware. They've been hit and hit hard over the last couple of years. So just being in that industry, your business may not be the target, but just being in the, in the industry is the target. So not after you, but they're after anybody that they can make money off of. Which is fundamentally the, the most common thing that hackers are after is money. How could they make money off of us? And one thing in cloud is just getting into our systems to be able to use our CPU or GPU capabilities that we've got set up to do something. And they're going to use it, but they're going to use it to mine for Bitcoins or something of that sort. If they're mining for Bitcoins and we're paying for the CPU, that's not going to be a fun bill at the end of the month. We do have to balance the confidentiality, the integrity, availability. It's always critical to think like that. In CISSP, one of my one of my favorite questions to ask in class is which one is most important: confidentiality, integrity, or availability? And there is an answer. There's not a general answer. I wouldn't expect all of us to agree, but there is an answer. Whenever you look at a specific system, whenever you look at a specific business, there is going to be an answer. Like right now, just inside of Zoom with this session, what's most important is availability. Confidentiality, you could have logged in and given any name you wanted. So I, I can't say for sure that the names you have given in the session are real. It doesn't look like you've lied, but it's not, it's not necessary to, it's really not necessary for me to, to know. So confidentiality is not, you know, the primary concern in here. It's just, it's just not what we're, we're doing. And yet we do want to make sure that we have just enough security, just enough to keep them safe, but not too much that um, it's stopping them from doing their work. So one of the critical ways to find enough security. So this is one of the, one of the five answers that I'm always looking for. I don't know. Can I do this one first? <laughs> My brain has a hard time skipping over the one I always put first. So yeah, let's go there. So the one that I always put first, which is an answer that I always take. I am not always the smartest cookie in a room. I definitely don't know the most about security. I know plenty. I don't know more than some people. Some people I know more. A lot of people know a lot more than I do. But I do find the IAC squared tests very passable. So my logic gets us through there. So my logic is, if I find a life safety answer, I'm taking it. CISSP absolutely can have life safety questions and answers. Cloud could. When you're looking at things from a cloud provider perspective, if there's a fire in the data center, the first thing you have to do is save people. And if you're the cloud provider, you have the people in the data center physically in your possession, so you need to protect life. So watch for those answers. It is an answer I always take. I found one answer in the last 18 or 19 years, I guess, um, of doing practice questions and tests. I found one answer where I was, I was gonna take that life safety answer and I could see I was gonna be wrong. And I was wrong, but I, I couldn't violate my rule. I had to take that answer. It one, one question, 19 years. Life safety, take the answers. 
Okay. So otherwise, finding the, the best answer for business, putting in the right security controls or the enough countermeasures or whatever it is we're going to put in place. One of the other critical answers that I always look for. So life safety answers I always take. A critical answer I look for is money. You must spend your money wisely. It's that extra piece, wisely. You have to spend your money wisely. So we have to make sure that we're doing cost benefit analysis. It must be a cost justified reason for putting that control in place. Like passwords. Passwords are still in use just about everywhere. They are not, they're not good security. They're not. They're just not good. <laughs> a good security. Maybe if you've got a 50 character password, okay, that's going to hold it very nicely for a very long time to come. But a lot of businesses are still at eight characters, 12 character passwords for corporate resources. That is not good security. But the cost for it, I, I know I oversimplify it, but fundamentally putting passwords in place is an extra few lines of code. I know I oversimplify it, but it's lines of code. It's not buying hardware. It's not retraining users. My 11-year-old niece has known what a password was since she was one. May not have had the right word for it at that time, but she's known what a password is basically her whole life. You don't have to train a user what a password is. So the training, the cost of the equipment, there's, there's very little, if anything, kind of off the screen there. There's very little, if anything, when it comes to cost for passwords. So putting passwords in place, you get some security for very little money. If it's in the other direction, we spend a lot of money and we don't get much security for it. Okay, that's a mistake. So I'm not sure that we should use passwords anywhere anymore, but I can justify the cost easily because it doesn't really cost a whole lot of anything except some time from the software developers, which is probably easier and cheaper than if we have to train our users to be able to use Google Authenticator. The average user, it's, it's not that complicated once you get used to it, once you understand and comprehend what it is. Using something like a Google Authenticator is not that difficult, but training users so that they understand how it works and then how to set up passwords when they get to a new site and they have to set up a password, how to scan the QR code and things like that. What is a QR code? That could take time. It's not that the users can't learn it. It's just it's going to take time and energy to go through that process. So you have to factor in how much time is it going to take? What's the security? I think it's cost justified. I think it would make a whole lot of sense. That's pretty much what I always use. If I have an option, that's what I'm going to do. If I can't use Google Authenticator, it'll be another authenticator in my phone. But my business is not the same as other businesses. So just because I think that's the right answer doesn't mean it's the right, business, right answer for another business. So we always want to take life safety answers and you want to watch for cost justified answers. At least in practice questions, especially around CISSP, there's a lot of practice questions that'll throw money in as an answer, like it is expensive, it's cheap, um, even possibly a certain value. I'm in the US, so I'll say $10,000, they might put a value in it. But if it doesn't justify it in that answer, it's not a good answer. What I think is expensive and what you think is expensive or what my business thinks versus the business you're working for thinks is expensive probably not the same thing. Just not, just not the same thing. So you can't say it is expensive or cheap and have that make any sense. It has to be in relationship to the benefit that you're going to get or something. So cost justified in some way, usually it's cost benefit analysis. So if you've got that, I can't promise it's the right answer. <laughs> Um, I'm not promising that. I can't promise it's the right answer, but I can tell you that I will look very carefully at that answer. And if I could possibly answer the question with it, it's probably the right answer. But in order to get there, who you might have to think like is a C-level executive. So not knowing who you are, where you work, what your title is, you might have to think from a C-level executive. Consistently, what I found, especially in my CISSP classes, CCSP is just so new, um, that I haven't had a lot of experience with this in my CCSP classes. But in CISSP, what I can tell you is there's one group of individuals that when they come through class, 
Doesn't happen a lot, but when they do end up in my class, I can predict at the very start of class, they're going to pass the test. It's gotten so that I actually usually say it out loud to them when they introduce themselves in class. Like I'm saying, not putting pressure on you, but I'm here to tell you, you're going to pass. You're, you're going to. And I have never been wrong on that. And the group is the cert, it's not the certified, the CSOs, the Chief Security Officers or CISOs, Chief Information Security Officers, a C level executive focused on security will pass the test. Guarantee it. So if in order to look at the answer and find cost justified makes sense, you might have to think from a C-level executive. And if you can possibly look from that perspective and think from there, and it is plausibly a way to answer the question, then there you go. You found the answer to the question. One thing I hear a lot about the exam, CISSP, CCSP, and CISM when people come out of the test is how bizarre the questions were. The wording is just so strange. But when you're talking to management, when you're talking to C-level executives versus talking to technical people, language is different. The way the sentences are structured, it's not, you know, English is English, which is what you're going to get, especially with CCSP. The exam's only offered in English. I think I'm lying. I think it's also available in Japanese. In English, it's not that the English is weird. English has certain rules to it. They follow the that logic. But the way the questions and the answers are worded, what it's pointing to, what it's thinking about is just not the same. Thinking about, I want AES as my encryption algorithm. I want my key stored in a hardware security module is one set of language and use of language as opposed to, well, what we need to do is build a business case. And inside of that business case, what I need to do is predict into the future what I'm going to get back as far as a return on my investment. And it's just different logic that gets applied for on the technical side versus the managerial side. So I, th I think it's what I saw when I was in the test without revealing anything about the test, looking at it from that perspective, I found the exam made perfect sense. I analyzed the questions. I, I spent a lot of time. It was when you could go backwards on questions. You can't do that anymore. I got lucky I could, so I could just, after I finished my test, I could just go backwards and forwards and just analyze the English, look at the questions, the answers, see how they were laid out, see what it was like, and it was clean. It was actually very clean English. Now, with that, in as far as the English on the cloud exam, I think it is clean English. I don't think it's a an exam where what you need to do is take a dictionary in with you because it's such strange words that you have no idea what they are if English is not your first language or even possibly if English is your first language, which can happen with CISSP. But CISSP is close to 30 years old, if not older. So at this point, they're still asking questions that are basic security questions they've been asking the whole time, but they want to ask the question in a different way from all the practice questions you will have ever seen, and that results in some strange English. CCSP is still plenty new, so we haven't gotten to that point in the questions. With that, I use my classes in Germany as my barometer for how good the English is. So it's not picking on Germany, it's the place that I teach the most where use of English in the country is at the lowest level. It's fine, it's Germany, they should speak German. It's not a problem. But when you're speaking German on a regular basis and you look at English a little bit, they translate all American programs on TV and every everything gets translated in German. They should, it's not a complaint. They should, it's Germany, I have fine, I'm fine with that. I've been working on my German so I can function in the country. So Germans, when they come out of the test, including those that are unsuccessful, my question is, was the English a problem? And the answer is no. I could read the question. I could read the answers. I knew what it was asking. I just failed to find the right answer through that process, but I knew the topic and I knew what it was asking. I just didn't see what they were looking for an answer apparently because I didn't pass the test. So English is clean. There's plenty of reports out there, or Reddit, Discord, and other places where people complain about how bizarre the English is. And my guess is looking at it from the wrong direction. 
if you look at it from a manager and think about, I need to make sure that I cost justify any purchase and anything that I'm doing, it could make more sense. The next answer, so life safety, cost justified. The next answer that I'm always looking for is what I've actually said many times now, which is it's all about the business. So some answer that says enterprise, corporation, business, and has some logic about what is the industry or what the CEO is concerned with or what the board of directors is concerned with, something about the business and what they're doing as a business, those make for really good answers. What is the right security to put in place for my business and your business? I don't know. What business are you in? So an answer to a question, what is the best security to put in place? A good answer to that question could be, I don't know. It's all about that business. It's all up to that enterprise. It's all about the corporation. It's all about the employees of the business making a determination based on the business. Something, some logic to the business, some part of the industry that they're in. It could be just um, views from the CEO, board of directors, how they want to run the business, what they're concerned about in business, how much security you ever put in place. There's no single right answer until you're inside of a single corporation. They could have used cost justification as their logic to come up with the business answer, or they could have taken a couple other pathways through this. So life safety, cost justified. Another pathway to find the right answer for a business is risk assessments. So four answers. So getting to what's the right answer for a business, what the business could have done is risk analysis, risk management, risk assessments, anything that allows the business to look at what could possibly happen. Like even just this, I'm using Zoom, which from a security perspective kind of makes me cringe. It's not the platform that I think is the most secure. It's actually the platform I think is one of the least secure platforms that I could possibly use for something like this, for leading classes and presentations. And it doesn't, it doesn't make me feel proud as a security professional to be on Zoom. But as a business, it works fine for having anybody around the planet being able to easily access the sessions. It seems to work pretty well. And inside of my business, what I'm doing is sessions like this, where I'm not talking about corporate secrets. These are not secrets about the test. <laughs> it's not IAC Square is trying to keep this information from us. It might be secrets from some people as they're preparing for the test based on reading books or something. It's just kind of a missed piece of information, but it's it's not corporate secrets. It's not trade secrets. It's not uh, national secrets. It's not healthcare information. It's got credit card information. Uh, there's nothing like that. So with that lack of confidentiality concern, there's a great lack of confidentiality concern for me that I'm willing to put myself on Zoom. It's not that I want to have a security breach, but I, I need the business to be able to work and function. So for access, allowing access from anybody from anywhere on the planet, this seems to work. It's all about the business, but it's doing a risk assessment. If I was, if this was a within a business or we're doing dealing with national secrets or having healthcare calls, I'm not sure that I'd think Zoom is even reasonable to even be in a conversation about what we should use. But given, given I'm not worried about confidentiality, integrity, I do need to make sure that my voice gets to you consistently. I need to make sure my video gets to you consistently. If I'm using slides, I need to make sure that that's going to work. So as long as it functions, I can, whatever I'm saying gets to you, whatever I'm, um, whatever I'm doing, you can see whatever I'm doing, what I'm sent, when I'm writing on a screen or something, you can see what I'm doing. As long as that gets across consistently, I've got integrity. That's good. Availability. I'm here. You're here. We can get connected. That's good. So lack of confidentiality, Zoom works okay because I want public access, I'm not teaching within a single business. I'm not teaching only people of my own business or anything like that. So 
it's all about my business. And the reasons I've made decisions that I've made so far are because of doing risk assessments or cost justifications. So looking at it from those two perspectives, I've got the right answer for my business. So if risk is there as an answer versus it's all about the business, it might be really hard to pick a choice. But if there's a risk-based answer, those make for really good answers. It's like, what's the best security to put in place? I don't know. You should do a risk assessment. You should do a risk analysis. You should manage your risk or any other, any other terms that show up around risk, like threat modeling, um, impact assessments, business impact assessments, anything like that that has us thinking about what could possibly happen and how bad would it be if it actually happens. Those are core. That that's the the like the heart of doing information security is thinking about how bad it could be. What's the chance of it of an attack? What's the impact of that attack? So impact and likelihood, fundamental basic ideas inside of risk. So risk answers are really good answers, but it's a huge group of possible answers. So risk answers, risk assessment risk analysis, risk management, business impact, business impact analysis, looking at the likelihood and the threat, the likelihood and the impact, um, or even getting into possibly discussing slightly more technical like single loss expectancies or annual rate of occurrences. Something like that could also work as well. So any question for any scenario that you could possibly encounter what is the best possible answer? If there's a risk answer, that's probably the right answer. Because what's critical in all of these tests is that you and I can both pick the same answer and it would make sense. So it could be that it's specific to a certain industry, like it's a banking question or it's a healthcare question. Otherwise, it's just business. And finding the best possible answers is up to the business based on threats could happen and there's an impact if they are realized. So what's the likelihood of it happening? What's the impact? Any discussion about that is going to help us choose the right security controls. How's it going so far? <laughs> these, are not, these are not easy tests, but when you have this logic that you're always looking for the best answers for the business, Things do get easier, I think, <laughs> in my experience. So always take life safety answers, risk assessment answers, risk analysis, risk, risk answers, cost justified, anywhere we're going to spend our money and spend our money wisely. Those are good answers. Otherwise, it is all about the business. So that could be the answer. And then in the background, what the business would have been doing is, cost justified based on risk, but it's up to that business, it's up to that enterprise. So in a way, these are all the same type of answer, which is manager answers, but it's, it's focusing on what it is to look for that's, that's a little bit more critical. So unless you're C-level executives and you're just constantly looking at, I need to pick the best choices for this business, it's hard to think along these lines if you're coming from a technical background. So very specific words and terms to look for, very specific concepts to look for. That is how management talks. So there's more there, but another, another thought along the way, a lot of advice that I've given over the years is this. When it comes to a question and you have, like you're reading through a question and you've picked, you think A is the right answer for some reason, Look at it one more time and ask, how would your boss answer that question? How, if you went to your boss and asked them, asked them that question, would they answer with AES? Or would they say, I don't know. We need to take a look at this and do a risk assessment because I don't know the likelihood of that particular event that you're worried about actually happening. And then if you're right that it could actually happen to us, we do need to find the best tool for us, for us but the best tool is going to have to be cost justified because you only have so much budget. <laughs> so if that's the kind of answer that they're going to give and you want to take the AES answer, but there is a risk answer in the list of the four possible answers, you got to go with that risk answer. 
It is man it's a management test at its heart. CISSP is really well known that it is intended as a manager test. Not everybody always agrees, but it is intended overall as a manager test. CCSP is just not, not well known that that's the intention because IAC squared has not spelled it out. They did on the CISSP, but CCSP, they just have not very carefully spelled, spelled things out and said, this is what we're thinking. We're thinking from a manager perspective. So it's experience around the exam and people having success that I can say, these are these. this is what's there. So you have to not only know why the answer is right, but why the other answers are wrong. <laughs> With that, a test taking tip that I have is if you can eliminate three answers, and you don't understand the fourth, the fourth one is right. <laughs> if you know three answers are wrong, you have to take that other answer. If you can, if you can throw out three, for whatever reason it is, it's technically wrong or it just it's on the wrong topic compared to the question, the fourth answer is the right answer. And it may be hard to see because it is inside of, um, inside of this, um, this manager logic. So, Got to handle questions. You're looking at the questions as you're a manager, trying to find the best possible answers. There are technical questions with technical answers, like which of the following algorithms is symmetric? And out of that list of four, you have to pick AES as opposed to um, RSA, Elgamal, and Schnorr. <laughs> They're technical questions with technical answers. That kind of question, none of the stuff that I've been saying is useful you have to actually know the technology to get through those answers. So throughout CISSP and CCSP, you have to know the technology. CISSP, you don't have to know into its depths. And if you know really well into the depths, it actually can cause you some trouble, it seems, on the test. On cloud at this point, I say something completely different. On cloud, the more you know, the better off you are. That's what I think. The more you know, the better off you are. So in my experience, when I looked at the test, my experience, my knowledge on cloud, I was pretty deep into OpenStack and its functionality and how it works before I went into the test. And that knowledge was useful. I know SSL, TLS, SSH. I know down at the bit level technology I've got inside and out. And in cloud, it, it was useful. So the more you know, the better off you are. So don't, you don't have to fight technical knowledge in this test, I don't think, in CCSP. CISSP, maybe, maybe. But I think it's in this logic that you have to fight your very um, far depth of knowledge. It's if there is a manager answer right next to the good technical answer, you want to take that good technical answer because that's what you do for a living. The better answer is do a risk assessment. The better answer is it's all about the business. The better answer is it has to be a cost justified decision, even though there's a really good technical answer right next to it. So I think that's really the problem with CISSP and it is definitely happening inside of CCSP. Here are your answers. Life safety, I always take it. You choose what you wanna do. Cost justification in any way, shape or form, cost by itself is bad, must justify the cost. Risk, anything risk-related, risk analysis, risk management, business impact, threat modeling, those are good answers. It's all about the business. I lost it there for a second. It's all about the business. What I choose for my business, probably not going to be the right answer for your business. But we're also probably highly likely in very different businesses. This is the primary thing that I do for my business, is I run my mouth trying to get security knowledge out. <laughs> This isn't so much security, it's the logic of the manager approaching security, but trying to get security knowledge out of my head is primarily what I do for a business. I am a contractor. I actually do help customers with their decisions that they make inside of their business as well. <laughs> so I, I, I do what I call real work. I don't really call this work. I, I just love talking about security. All right. Otherwise, the fifth answer is an order. The fifth critical thing to look for on answers is the order that I would choose answers in. So if I had multiple answers that are good, which is the most likely the right answer here? So the order is people, process, technology. If there are 
three out of the four answers, I've got all three of those things, people, process, and technology. The answer I'm going to take is people. Hire the right people, train your people, educate your people, um, do background checks on your people, anything that's human related, which life safety is in that category, anything human related. I need to make sure I've got the right people in the right jobs with the right training. Those, those are the right answers. If you hire the right people in your business, we're on the right path to being able to choose the correct options for our security. So thinking just about the security side of things, hire the right security professionals and we're on the right path. But what we need to do is hire the right people and give them the right processes. So if there's a process, so if there's no people answer, there's a process answer and a technology answer, process is gonna be the next choice. Process is something that is a procedure that we go through, it's procedural in nature, change management, configuration management, um, patch management, doing a business impact assessment is a process. So my five things I look for kind of cross over into each other. I guess it's kind of one set of answers that I'm looking for is management answers, but specifically if I've got choices, now what order? So I want people answers first. If that's not there, I'm looking for process answers. If there's a change management answer and there's a way to answer that question where change management actually is a logical thought process management could have, change management is going to be a good answer. So if you get hire the right people and give them the right processes, now we're definitely on the right path because the right people with the right process will get us to the right technology. So if there's a tech answer, it could be right, but I'm gonna take process answers before I'll take those and I take people answers first. So keep people alive fits into that. Otherwise it's hire the right people, educate them, make sure you've done back, background checks, anything like that. Those are, those are good answers. They don't, they don't necessarily occur more in the exam, but if there are people answers, I'm going to take those before I take process and I'm going to take process before I take technology. Just the logic of management. I'm less worried about the technical, technical. I'm less worried about the exact thing that we're doing. I'm more worried about hiring the right people and giving them the right processes. It's my greatest concern. So it is finding the best possible answer for a business requires the right people doing risk analysis, justifying the cost, doing um, project planning, project management. I need to make sure that the decisions are well made within the business. It is a difficult, difficult process there. Like I said, there's no, there's no right answer when it comes to security. So me saying, I'm not, I'm not proud that I'm using Zoom. What was your thought when I said the same thing? You were when you found out I was doing this on Zoom, did you have a thought how ridiculous that is? Or, hey, that's fine. That's where actually I do most of my work in my office. So there's not a right answer. I'm, I'm willing to bet that you had slightly different reactions to this is on Zoom. <laughs> but then uh, it's on Zoom. It's on Zoom. Why is she on Zoom? What's what she thinking? Or, hey, it's on Zoom. It's what I'm used to. It's on Zoom. That's fine. I don't do it in my business, but it's fine if this is on. There's no right answer until you get to a business and you justify the expenditures based on the risk that we need. So it's literally in this simplistic discussion, just where would I do a presentation like this? There's no right or wrong answer to it. It's all about finding the best possible option given the business. And if I stay on Zoom, it's my choice. It's my business, it's my choice. And if you don't like it, <laughs> go someplace else. But if my customers don't like it, then I'm going to, I'm going to change to something else myself. So it's not quite as rude as it might've sounded there. My business, I have to make the decision. It's my threats. It's my concerns. Like I said, I'm not doing confidential conversations. Like it's not business uh, trade secrets that we're discussing. It's not national secrets that we're, we're discussing. We're not talking about patient records and just trying to decide the right course of action to take for a patient given their disease or something of that sort. So given without that concern, Zoom is okay. It's not necessarily the right answer, but it's my business, my choice. And it's where I, it's where I am now. I'm not trying to justify. I'm not trying to 
explain or excuse, or it's just the conversation, just something as simple as this, where should I do a presentation? If that was the scenario and a question, the answer would be, it's all about your business. It's your choice. Do whatever you want or cost justified. How much is it going to cost? What are you going to get out of it? What are your security, the risk? What are your security concerns and threats? Then what's the chance of that happening to me? What would be the impact? I have to weigh out the likelihood and the impact. Those make for really good discussions so that I can eventually find the right answer for my business. Yeah, there are a lot of different tools. I agree. A lot of different tools. Otherwise, it's just in looking at this single topic, trying to discuss the single topic, what it comes down to are these answers that I've said. It's not a life safety issue. If it was, it's critical that we choose the right option, which could be if we're in a hospital and we're doing any kind of surgeries and the consultant surgeon is going to be on the other end in Zoom. So they need to see what's going on and we need to make sure it's going to work so that we can get their opinion as we're going through something. It's a plausible scenario. So life safety, not so much the concern, but hire the right people, go through the right process, choose the right technology, hire the right people. I, I hired myself, so I'm, I'm good. I did a background check on myself and I trust myself. <laughs> Otherwise, cost justified. It's a reasonable cost for my business, given how much money I make and how much I'm spending on this, what I'm going to get back out of having Zoom and things like that. It's a reasonable expenditure. I might be able to spend my money more wisely someplace else, but it's okay for my business. For my business, it's okay right now. Otherwise, it's doing a risk assessment. What are the threats? What is the impact? And I have thought about it. I have looked into Zoom. I do appreciate that link. I will read more about it. I'm always looking. It's what I do for a living. It's I'm always looking. I'm always investigating. I'm always trying to find what the problem is. But doing that risk assessment, knowing there are threats and concerns, Zoom can still be okay given my business and the nature of my business and what I'm doing. And if somebody jumps into the session that, you know, if somebody was able to hop into an available Zoom session just because they guessed at the meeting ID number or something like that, I it's a small annoyance in my life. But the likelihood that they jump in and then stay... <laughs> They just are randomly jumping into sessions for the fun of it. <laughs> Chance that they're going to jump in and stay is unlikely. Jump in and do some kind of damage to the session. Uh, so the discussion on Zoom is kind of the just the scenario. And you can see how me talking about Zoom gets you into a certain mode of thought. And I appreciate the information, but you want to watch that on the exam and see where your brain goes when you start listening to scenarios and the questions. So when you're reading the question, listening to the voice in your head, reading it, like if there's a scenario where you've got, you're working for a company and it's setting up um, uh, point of sale terminals for a coffee shop in the islands, or you're working for a coffee shop in the islands. And what they want to do is be able to charge credit cards to be able to take money for coffee. What is the best possible option? Should they use TLS? Should they do a risk assessment? I, I, don't, I don't know where I'm going with the question, but you get a specific scenario and we're setting up, we're doing coffee and then we're in the islands and we're worried about point of sale. And that means we've got PCI DSS and that could hook your brain into things. But again, look for these answers. If there's a life safety answer, if Selling coffee in the islands is a life safety concern of some sort. We've got issues to deal with. <laughs> Otherwise, do a risk assessment. Which answer is the best answer? Should they go with uh, like the little squares that you can see in smaller stores? Or should they set up their own software? Should they have um, a software developer create software for them to use on their computer? Distinct software that was built just for them? I mean, that's awfully expensive for a coffee shop in the islands to be able to afford. So using something like Square would make more sense. Yeah, there, there's going to be distractors, which is what I'm pointing to is from the, just talking about Zoom and where your brain goes, you start getting hooked into different parts of it based on your experience at your office and what you think of Zoom in general. And then when you're looking through questions on the exam, you're going to have the, the same issues. So what you're looking for is kind of grounding yourself when you go to the answers, 
find the life safety answers. There's no life safety. See if there's a risk answer. See if there's a process answer. See if there's a cost justification answer. See if there's an answer. It's about the business, the corporation. We got to find the best thing for that business. And if you had each of those four answers, now you got to decide which one's the better. And I work in the order of people first, then processes, and then technology. So doing a risk assessment is a process. It's something that you go through. And when you get to the end, you could then make decisions. It's something that drives us towards a decision. It doesn't drive us at a specific system or tool. It drives us through the process of choosing the right tool. Like what process should I go through to choose? Do I use Zoom or Teams or something else? There's, there's plenty of alternatives. And given the nature of my business, I've got customers that I work with across the planet. I've got students across the planet wanting to teach public classes. So anybody comes in, I'm a business of one. So Zoom among, <laughs> Zoom to have a meeting with myself is not the concern. So it's not within my business, it's reaching out to public. So I want other people to be able to join me on these sessions. So given that, I've got specific concerns and issues in my business that may not be the concerns that you have in your business. So it's just that just that logic. You have to keep in mind that those answers are there. In CISSP, they are, they are there in plenty. How many you'll see? I don't know. It depends. Since it is an adaptable exam and the next question is based on how well you did on the previous questions, who knows what's going to happen? Who knows? Um, but with CCSP, you're, you're set with the uh, questions. When you sit down at the computer, there's 125 questions in your exam that you're about to go through. Nothing's going to change as you move on. It's not adaptable. You can't go back, but what how you answer something doesn't alter what's going to happen on the next question. Side note on CISSP, you could go anywhere from 100 to 150 questions. If it goes past 100, do not give up. If it is still giving you questions, you're still in the game. I've seen people pass at question 152. It's not supposed to go past 150. If it's still giving you questions, you're in the game. Don't give up. CCSP, you don't know. You just don't know. But if you did CISSP, CCSP doesn't feel the same. You're not going to feel like you're getting run over by a truck. You won't feel like it was the worst experience of your life and you never want to go through it again. <laughs> you won't be confused as to what's happening during the test. I've, I've had a lot of students going through the test. Their thought is, I think I might actually be passing this. And they were right. So it, it's just not... It's not the same. It doesn't compare at that level. But my thought when I was in the test was, this is a CISSP test. Everything that I tell students, which is the, uh, thinking about this stuff that we've been covering, all the stuff that I tell students nonstop in CISSP drove me to answers. There was times where I had to fight my technical side in order to take the manager answer. I actually started lecturing myself based on what I've been saying to you. I had that, that lecture going on in myself in my own head, pointing finger at myself going, you tell people. Yeah, CCSP can be harder. And that's where I think it's the, the knowledge, knowing what cloud is definitely makes it harder. Or just knowing that it is a manager level test. If you didn't have that before, that could make it harder. So it's those two things. It's, so from the technology side, it's knowing platform, but it's getting into the provider side, like literally how do you build a cloud? So the customer can go to aws.amazon.com. There's a ton of work before you ever get to that interface. Making that interface possible is an incredible amount of work for the cloud provider. And you have to look at that perspective to get through the exam successfully. So that's often the hardest part there that I find. All right, well, we're just about done. So five specific things I'm always looking for. Life safety, people before process, before technology, always looking for risk, anything answers, risk management, threat modeling, business impact, anything related to risk and something could happen, likelihood and impact. Always looking for cost justification. I need to spend my money wisely because it's all about my business. So when I'm in a question, 
Well, here's a critical thing for both. The questions themselves have nothing to do with your life. Don't, don't take it personally. It has absolutely nothing to do with your life. I've done so many practice questions in my career that whenever I look at questions, I'm like, well, somebody wrote it and I might consider them an idiot or I might consider them the most brilliant person on the planet after I read it. But that question has literally nothing to do with my business or my life. I just need to find the best answer. Follow their logic. They're driving you at a single answer. Follow, go along for the ride. And then click next because and let it go because that question has nothing to do with your life. Okay, well then I guess we're at the end.